Hello, my name is Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of the book Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. What I want to talk about today is measuring drag and measuring changes in drag. Now, in another one of these videos, I talked about measuring lift and downforce, and I showed you how you can measure lift and downforce quite accurately. You can go out on the road and you can determine if your car has lift, if your car has downforce, and how much of either. So, is measuring drag similar? Unfortunately, I don't think it is. Measuring drag on the road is really quite difficult, and measuring small changes in drag on the road, I think basically is impossible. Now, lots of people talk about measuring changes of drag on the road, so let's have a look at some of the techniques that are being used, and let's have a look at what I've found, both in my own experience and also looking extensively at the research. The first way that people go about measuring drag is what's called a coast down test, by performing a coast down test. Now, in a coast down test, which is hard to say fast, in a coast down test, you travel along at a certain speed, you select neutral gear, you roll the car, you have started a stopwatch at the same time as you have backed off the throttle and gone into neutral, and you click the stopwatch when the car has slowed by itself to a certain speed. So you might start a coast down test at uh, 60 miles an hour and it might go to 30 miles an hour or it might be 100 kilometers an hour down to 80. Now, the logic behind this is the greater the drag, the quicker you will slow. And so if you have reduced drag, you will roll for a longer distance. Therefore, the, the stopwatch will show a longer time. Now, I first tried doing coast down tests a long time ago, 30, 35 years ago, and I was doing those at the same time as I was doing acceleration tests. I was doing 0 to 100 km an hour tests, 0 to 60 miles an hour tests, and they were very, very consistent. In those days, the car I was testing on, I remember, used to be doing 6.8, 6.9, 6.8, 6.9 seconds, and it was doing it quite consistently. When I tried doing a coast down test, I found the times were all over the place, and I thought, well, this, is, this isn't worth pursuing. When I was writing the book, I went and did another whole lot of tests. And again, I found problems. The times were all over the place, but what really worried me is when I deliberately increased drag, I couldn't get a consistent change in those coast down times. And the way I deliberately increased drag was simply to wind the windows down. A car with the windows wound down is certainly going to have a lot higher drag than one with the windows up. I found that I couldn't be consistent in the results I was getting, um, even just doing test after test with apparently the same car configuration resulted in a very wide spread of times. When I wound the windows down, there wasn't a distinct change in those times, uh, which would be reflective of the fact that the testing was accurate. Now, one of the problems with coast down testing is the higher the speed at which you can do it, the better it is. The other problem, which, which obviously has, has some um, limitations for people working in countries where there are speed limits, the other limitation is it's very heavily dependent on there being no wind, and really that's a very, very difficult environment to find. Now you might be saying to yourself, but don't, don't uh, engineers use coast down tests? I did a really intensive search of the SAE, the Society of Automotive Papers, that have been written on the topic, do use coast down testing. And what I found is that those engineers were using very sophisticated testing techniques. For example, they had a probe out the front of the car, and on that probe was mounted an anemometer measuring actual wind speed and logging fast, and there was also a device that measured wind direction to take into account your effects, uh, slight crosswinds. In addition, they were using sophisticated computer models that took into account frictional losses, inertial uh, changes, and so on. So yes, they were getting good results that correlated well to wind tunnel results, but really they were using techniques that are way out of the, the area that a normal amateur car modifier can use. I'm not writing off coast down testing. I think if you are able to do it at really high speed, if you live in Germany or somewhere where there's no speed limits and you're able to do coast down tests between say 200 kilometers an hour and 160 kilometers an hour or 130 miles an hour and 100 miles an hour, I think you'd be much more likely to be accurate. 
But I think in countries where the speed limit is 100 kilometres an hour or 60 miles an hour, I think it's really going to be very, very difficult to get results from coast down tests. I did do a variation of coast down testing that I thought looked like it had a lot more potential. You need to have a, um, a gradient, a hill, which is dead constant, exactly constant gradient. You need to have a very accurate fast update speedo. I used a 10 hertz GPS, but I did get results doing coast down testing down the hill, which were both consistent and were indicative of changes that I was making in the drag complexion of the car. Now I cover that technique in the book, um, so that's something that you can read more about. Uh, I think that worked much better than the, the traditional approach to coast down testing. What about other ways of measuring changes in drag? Well, you can measure engine power. You can monitor how much power the engine is creating. If you have lowered drag for the same speed, the engine will need to develop less power. Now, how can you measure engine power? Well, you do it indirectly. If your car is an airflow meter and you're holding a constant air fuel ratio, you can measure how much air is going into the engine. Just use a, a multimeter on the airflow meter. It helps if you have a high resolution multimeter. And you can actually see reasonably precisely how much air the engine is breathing and then at that fuel ratio, air fuel ratio, how much power the engine is developing. I've done this on a variety of cars on the road. Uh, I did it on a Volkswagen uh, Golf soft top where you could roll the roof back retract the roof which obviously dramatically increased drag and you could see those results re represented in the voltage that you were measuring. Uh, so it worked but will it work with tiny changes in drag? I don't think so. What about top speed? I mentioned speed a moment ago when I was talking about coast down testing. Top speed is really a good way of measuring changes in aerodynamic drag. If your engine is producing the same power because nearly all that power is going into overcoming aerodynamic drag at high speed, small changes in drag will be reflected in changes in top speed. And I remember years and years ago, I tested a car which had pop-up headlights. And I did test the top speed with the headlights retracted and with the headlights up. Wall tough testing of that same car showed that with the headlights up, there was a massive disturbed air on the bonnet, which otherwise wasn't there. So the wall tough testing indicated that drag uh, was a lot higher with the headlights popped, and the top speed also indicated that as well. In fact, top speed dropped by 10 kilometers an hour, six miles an hour, with the headlights in their, their popped up position. But again, uh, top speed, uh, really only achievable by amateurs working on their cars if you live in a country where there are no speed limits. Really, in the final analysis, I think the best way of seeing changes in drag is fuel economy mileage measured over a long period. Now, that works well if you're a very patient person. You make a change to the car, you drive it for the next 1,000 miles, 1,600 kilometres, you measure what your average fuel economy was over that period compared with the previous 1,000 uh, miles, 1,600 kilometres. Um, if you are measuring fuel economy over years, then obviously changes in drag or changes in, in uh, um, um, the, the amount of fuel that the engine is using are, are reflected really well in that. So in the book, I actually do feature a, a vehicle, a truck, which has been extensively aerodynamically modified. And I use the fuel economy figures provided by the owner to really show how the aerodynamic drag had been decreased. It's not something you can uh, do in 10 minutes though, is it? You can't uh, um, change the shape of the, the exterior rear vision mirrors and then go for a drive and see a dramatic change. It really has to be an average over a long period of time. Where does that leave us? Well, realistically, it's quite hard, isn't it? It's not like lift and downforce, which as I said earlier, can be measured really, really accurately. Um, I don't think coast down testing is anywhere near as accurate as, as some people pretend. Um, or, or perhaps believe. I, I don't think they're actually pretending. I think they believe those figures. But really, if you're going to use coast down testing, make some dramatic changes to the car and ensure that those changes are immediately reflected in the measurements that you're making. If the spread of your measurements is greater than the change caused by the aerodynamic modification, then obviously it becomes really problematic to, 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 to make judgments about what's actually going on. Engine power, 
especially if you're in a place where you can drive fairly fast, I think would be uh, a useful technique to employ. Top speed, definitely, uh, but here I'm talking about how fast will the car go absolutely flat out in, in whatever gear gives the, the highest actual top speed. Uh, but fuel economy, mileage measured over a long period, I think is going to be the most accurate way of assessing major changes in aerodynamic drag. It's, it's not a quick and easy solution, but it's one that I think you could be pretty confident is reflecting reality. Lots about this in my book, uh, examples of the coast down data that I was getting and, and the spread of those figures, uh, examples of measuring engine power uh, with the car in different configurations, and also examples of that coast down, down a, a constant incline hill, which I think did give uh, much more um, believable results in terms of the aerodynamic changes that were being made. All in the book. Uh, I look forward to you reading it. Thank you.